What's up YouTube? I'm Jay from Encounter Wargaming and today we're going to be making some awesome scenic bases for our 40k and Age of Sigmar armies. So to build our scenic bases, all we're going to need is this right here, a basic square of cork. Now I got this at the Dollarama. It actually comes in packs of two of these squares, these square tiles, for like a buck twenty-five, maybe maybe three bucks actually for the two but uh, that's really not expensive if you think about it because what we're gonna do is get a crap load of bases out of this so already on the other side here what I've done is I've traced out all the various sizes of bases that I want to make from this so I've got you know a few 60s a few 50s 40s 32s and 25s all the standard sizes that we use for Warhammer 40,000 and then uh, all I have to do now that I have the exact sizes is literally rip them all out of this. I'm not going to cut them into perfect circles because that's not what I'm going for. I actually want to create rough shapes with them. Now a couple of them are a little close to each other and in that case what you can actually do is cut them apart but you don't want to leave the edges very sharp knife cuts. You want to break them off later. So I'll show you that in a second. Just run a quick knife through that. There you go. And then what I'm going to do is break off all of the outsides, trying to stay somewhat in the right size of the base. Now keep in mind that I actually laid down a base and traced this out. So the blue line is actually bigger than the base is itself. The inside of the blue line would be the actual size of the base. So if I take off a little bit of the blue line, that's okay, but I don't want to go too far in past it. Just break them off and just make it look like a rough stone. And there you go. That's the base for our base. Now I'm going to go through and do all of these, break them all out. It's going to take me a while, so there's no point in you guys watching me. And what I'm actually going to do also is all the pieces that I break off, I'm going to keep right next to them here in a nice little pile, and we're going to use those to make these look even more scenic. All right, so now that I've got all my bases broken out, here we go. I've got some 60s. Got some 50s, got some 40s, 32s, and lots of 25s. I'm not sure what army I'm going to use these for yet, but those are all our bases. That's an awful lot I got out of this little sheet. I think I got 24 of these. Um, I want to say 10 of these. Yep, 10. Six of these, four of these, and three of these. So we should be able to do quite a few models with these. The next step I'm actually going to do is take my palette here and I'm just going to dump out some white glue. Just standard PVA, nothing special. And then with all of these pieces that we broke off, all the extra pieces, I'm going to just randomly like throw them around these. So I'll start with one of the 60s. Um, and then I'm going to take the large pieces and stuff, any of them that have like this one, for example, it has a straight edge on it. There you go, you can see that there. I'm just going to take my fingers and break it up into smaller pieces. We don't want any straight edges. We just want these to be rough rocks. And all I'm going to do is take especially larger ones like this, dip it in the PVA, and then just stick it on wherever I think it should go. Now you may get some squeeze out and stuff, guys. Like if you see when I push that on, I got a bunch of squeeze out. That's okay. What you can actually do is just take it and move it around a little bit like this. And that will soak into the cork, will prevent large globs because even though this stuff so soaks into the cork really well you don't want globs in the corners you get a look you get a couple here or there no big deal uh, we're gonna put a bunch of layers of glue and paint and everything on top of this so it's not a big deal but I basically want to take my larger ones first especially for the large bases like this and get the large pieces on There's a couple there that looks pretty good and then I'll take the little ones and sort of just create the stacks. Stack them on top of one another like that. Put another little one on this guy. You can put one row, but I like to put at least two layers up like that. Because that just gives it a little more character, makes it a little more dynamic. Maybe you know you can put a character's like leg up on one of them, or you can position things however you wish. But right now. This is probably good. Maybe I'll add one more right there because I still feel it's a little naked. And there you go. 
sweet little scenic base. I'm just going to put these aside to dry. I'm going to go ahead and do all the rest of these exactly like that, even the little ones. The little ones don't need as many. The larger ones, you know, go crazy. Um, I'm just going to go through and do all these, and then I'll show you how we're going to seal it in so that this cork doesn't come apart later in the future. So the final step before painting these guys is going to be taking our PVA glue and just giving them a good coat, uh, some of them maybe even two or three coats of PVA before we lay down our paint. And that's just as simple as pouring the PVA out on my palette, taking a brush, and painting the entire thing with glue. This is going to take a while guys, so be patient with it, but it'll be totally worth it because you find as cork, like as you touch it and stuff like that, it tends to flake off and little pieces chip off. And so with this layer, it'll make sure it all holds together. Now this stuff is basically a sponge, so it will soak up the glue a lot, which is why you want to make sure you put a lot on. Don't glob it on so that you kill all your detail but at the same time put a nice thick layer on there and you'll probably even have to do a second layer. Make sure to get lots in the ends here. Uh, you can just run along the top a little bit. The top isn't as much of a danger as the ends are, but as long as you get lots on the ends it will soak in and it will harden up real nice and then by the time you put your paint and everything on it won't be chipping off later in the future unless you know throw the model across the room. If you're just handling it though, it should be fine. So I'm going to go ahead and do all that on all these and then uh, we'll get into painting them. Sweet, so now that we've got two layers of PVA glue on all our cork, as you can see they're a lot harder than they were before, before they, were, they have a little bit of give to them. They still have a little bit of squish to them, but not enough that it's going to matter once we put all, a whole bunch of other layers on here. So the next stage, we are going to add some sand. Pretty straightforward, same as basing always. You ju basically just want to add it to the top areas because we have these nice uh, details around the outside now, but the top looks kind of whack. I mean, you can just paint this as is and it does look like cracked earth if you're going for like that desert look, but I want these to look more like rocks. Um, I'm going to do my standard basing method with the brown and the static grass and all that stuff. I just want to kind of add some rocky details. So, just like we usually do, take your PVA glue and cover the areas that you want the sand to be. Again, like I said, I'm really just concentrating on the flat areas and not everywhere, just the majority of it. And just dip it right in the sand. Tap it off, and there you go. On to the next one, same deal. A little bit on the flat area. Right there, right there. I can even just put it face down right in here, move it around a little tiny bit. Tap it off, and that's that. So now we get into the fun part, painting these beautiful things. So I went ahead then and painted all the bases with this base coat. I, I bought this house paint for a recent terrain project. You guys saw the jungle table. This is left over from that. Um, this is the Satin Espresso Rust-Oleum, so it's actually rust paint which I've said before, I like to use as the base, especially for terrain, because it seals in all the sand, it's very, it's very sticky, you know what I mean? It, sort of, it holds it together, especially with the cork being so fragile that you can rip it apart with your hands. Now that we've added so many layers of glue and sand and etc., the rust paint is just going to harden them up even more. And I painted both sides with it, just to show you guys that in detail. Same with the white glue, make sure when you're pinning it on, you paint both sides, just to prevent it warping on your bases. So now that my bases are fully dark brown, sort of that burnt umber color, um, I'm going to start painting them. And this is just going to be simple dry brushing. The three colors I'm going to use are Dawnstone for the rock borders, the rock faces, Mornfang Brown for the majority of the dirt, and then a Ushapti Bone that's going to go over the entire base. So I'm going to start with my Dawnstone, and for this stage actually, I'm going to do a dry brush, but I'm actually going to use my double zero brush, uh, simply because I need it small enough that I'm not going to paint gray all over the areas I want to be brown sand, and be very pinpoint precise with it, and that'll save me a lot of time, because if I have to touch up this brown again, I'm going to have to leave it for a, quite a while. And, uh, and then come back to it, which is fine when filming video, but I want to get these things done. So, 
Let's do it. More or less, I'm just painting the uh, port. It's actually more of an overbrush than a dry brush. I'm bored because you're boring. I'm annoyed because you're annoying. You're the one having all the fun. There you go, guys. Got as little on a little of it on the brown as I could. Got a nice gray. Oh, sorry about that. Got a nice gray border going all the way around the rock faces, and already it has so much more personality. So I'm gonna keep going on these, and then we're gonna go on to the Mornfang Brown. So I just realized it would be a heck of a lot more beneficial for you guys and a lot easier for me to just show you one vase and then I'll show you all of them when they're complete rather than going, I'll be back to you in a second. So anyway, here we go. Got my Mornfang Brown. I've got all my Dawnstone around the borders of all my cork pieces and now I'm just going to take my Mornfang Brown. I actually did more of an overbrush here than a dry brush. I called it a dry brush in the last stage, but it's actually more of an overbrush. I didn't... I started by drying my brush out on the paper towel and then I realized it was much more efficient without drying it out on the paper towel, just going very broad strokes and getting as much gray on there as I really could while leaving the shadow in the crevices. And I think it looks pretty cool. So the next step, I am going to dry brush this time on my paper towel with the Mornfang Brown, all on the flat areas, everywhere there's sand. I'm going to be careful not to get too much on the gray. If I get a little bit on the gray, it's not that big of a deal. So there it is. Got that brown on there, got the gray on the rock areas, and now we're going to go on to the final paint stage. So I forgot to mention that uh, for the brown here, I actually used my number four brush. So I started with a very small one to try and get very precise and on the gray and not get too much on the dirt. Now I went a little bit bigger and tried to get all the dirt painted. So now we're going to finish the entire base off, as far as paint's concerned, with some Ushapti bone. And for this one, I've got my gigantic tank brushes, and I'm just going to dry brush some on top. Now, I want to make sure, with this layer, just as we've done in all the terrain videos in the past, that it's a very, very light dry brush. I don't want to go too heavy with it, because I'll end up killing the base and making it look white. This is just really to add the final sort of highlight to all of the colors, and I'm gonna do the entire base. The sides, the tops, flat areas, whatever. I'm gonna do it all. Just finishes everything off, ties all the colors together nicely. Now we're gonna add on some foliage and stuff. To finish them off, I've just got here some uh, Gale Force 9 sort of desert grass, dead grass. I just realized I had a whole bunch of this stuff and I rarely ever use it. So I think it's a good idea that I use it for these. I use it for you guys for this tutorial. So, I've got some PVA glue over here on my palette off camera. And I'm really just gonna search around the base for areas that I think, you know, maybe the dry brush is too light or areas in the crevices here where the dry brush actually didn't get. And I'm gonna put the PVA there. Basically, this is the stage that gets to cover my mistakes. Like I said, it's kind of terrain, so you can be kind of haphazard with it, and you can use techniques like this to kind of hide your errors. So I'm just putting glue anywhere I think doesn't look too amazing to me. A little bit up here. And some here. I do want quite a bit of grass. I notice people, a lot of the time, put very small patches of grass on their bases. And it looks kind of weird to me. It looks unnatural. I guess they don't want to cover up the uh, paint job they've done on the base. But if there's going to be grass, if anything is going to be in small spots, it's the dirt. There's usually a large amount of grass on things like this. I'm just going to take this desert grass and just kind of like sprinkle it on top. Everywhere I put my PVA glue. What you can even do is take out a bunch of it like this and kind of push it into the base. A large pinch of it. Just kind of push it on. Make sure you have a whole bunch so that your fingers don't get coated in glue and grass. And then just tap it off onto the container. And bam, there's our sweet scenic base. 
So there's all our beautiful bases completely painted and grassed and ready to have some miniatures glued onto them. So I hope you guys enjoyed that tutorial. Um, as you can see, we built quite a few bases with very little material and it cost almost nothing. I mean, as far as the paints and static grass, most people already have that in their arsenal. Um, the cork, super cheap and was super easy to make. Just a little bit of white glue, again, something everybody who is into this hobby already has, so that's awesome. So that concludes our tutorial for this awesome Tuesday. Uh, look out for more tutorials like this in the future. Uh, me and Adam are constantly, Adam and I, are constantly doing tutorials on little hobby tips like this. So make sure to hit subscribe, hit that little notification bell, and you will be notified every time a video like this comes out. Also, feel free, if you would like to support Encounter Wargaming, feel free to go to the link below, buy a t-shirt from us. There are some pretty cool t-shirts in there, which uh, we designed ourselves with our logo and various other cool sayings on them. Uh, if you would really like these videos and you really like what we do, become a patron. Uh, you can go to the link below, it's in, again in the description, and basically for a dollar a video for these regular Tuesday and Thursday videos, it gives you access to a whole bunch more videos whenever we release a Patreon only video, which is usually at the end of any of our series or campaigns. Uh, you will get that video where nobody else can see other than patrons. Also, there's a hobby time series that we come out with about once a month, uh, just updating you on what we're working on behind the scenes, letting you know what's coming up in the future, as well as a whole bunch of other perks uh, that go along with being a patron, including uh, a bunch of free swag once you're you know, a patron for a 12-month period, and, uh, and things like that. And basically, all the money from the t-shirts and from the Patreon all goes right back into the channel. It goes on helping us getting better equipment, um, building more terrain, getting more miniatures, basically all the things that make these videos possible. So thanks to all the people who have already jumped on the Patreon. Thank you to all the subscribers. You guys are awesome. And I'll see you at our next encounter. Like a monkey in a rocket on his way back home. Okay.